Awesome. Well, great to meet all of you. Um, my name is Anna Zimmerman. I graduated in 2017 from CMC. Um, I'm really sorry I'm not there in person today. I'm based in London, um, and it's a bit of a long flight to come just for the day to, to Claremont. Um, but I will be at CMC at the end of the month um, for the RDS recognition dinner. So happy to grab a coffee or, or chat then. Um, but today, uh, I'm excited to talk with you about working in health. So there are three things that we'll talk about today. The first is my career path and what having a career in health has meant to me. Second is what working in health actually means and what I wish I knew when I was in your shoes. And finally, I'll share my overall perspectives on opportunities and global and women's health um, that will hopefully spark new or different ways of thinking about the problems you've considered for today. Um, I'm very creepy, as we'll talk about later uh, in the presentation, and I sort of flipped through all of your pitch slides in the overall deck, um, and I'm really, really excited for, for all the problems you're addressing. So hopefully this is helpful to sort of start to think about, about these issues in new and different ways. Great. So my definition of a career in health has expanded tremendously. Um, I grew up in Seattle and went to all-girls school, and I loved science. I was a big science nerd. Um, in my mind, if I was smart and interested in, in science and I wanted to help women, there was one career path for me, and that was to be a doctor, specifically to be an ob guy. Um, so I came to CMC with a very, very clear uh, career aspiration in my mind and a very, very narrow idea of what it meant to work in health. Um, but shortly after arriving in Claremont, um, I started making more pre-med friends and hanging out with, with students who also wanted to become doctors. Um, I noticed a really big difference between myself and them. They felt deeply called and compelled to practice medicine. It was really a vocation or an or aspiration for a vocation for them. Um, and for me, I just thought it sounded interesting and fun and I liked science, which in my mind was not really the type of attitude you want in your doctor. So I decided I probably shouldn't go to medical school. Uh, so I started to think more about what having a career in healthcare meant if I weren't practicing medicine. Um, so it's really started to think about like, what is the intersection of science and business and what type of career could I have in health if I weren't going to be a doctor? I added an economics major to my chemistry major. I started thinking more about what a corporate or a philanthropic career in healthcare could look like. At the time, it seemed like pursuing consulting would be a good way to understand the business of healthcare across the entire sector. So I spent three years at BCG in San Francisco, where I focused on global health and the biopharmaceutical industry. This was a really affirming experience for me because it made me realize that there are so many different ways to have a corporate or a philanthropic career in healthcare without going to medical school. Particularly my work in global health, um, especially a case on women's reproductive health, reignited my interest in women's health that I had had since, since high school. Um, so after three years at BCG, I went to the Stanford Graduate School of Business to pursue my MBA. Um, and while I was at business school, which really was at the height of COVID, so I, I empathize with those of you in the room who had COVID, who had a little bit of Zoom school. Um, but, but while I was at business school, my main goal was to explore what a career in women's health could look like. So I interned at Maven Clinic and other women's health startups to test this hypothesis. And I did independent studies on the women's health landscape, mostly in the U.S., uh, I was really frustrated by how horrible, literally horrible, the current state is for health for women um, in the U.S. and around the world, but I was really excited about all of the opportunities to drive impact. Um, so today, I am back at BCG in our London office working in biopharma and building out more of our women's health expertise and capabilities. My overall career aspirations are to be a, a leader in women's and global health. So while I was at CMC, my biggest uncertainty was what it meant to work in health if I wasn't going to be a doctor. Through the last few years, through all of this exploration I just walked through, I now know that there are nearly infinite ways to combine my interest in health, science, business, and impact into a career. I want to spend some time today talking about what these careers are. Um, I think you are all, you know, from my creeping on your slides, um, I think you are all well ahead of me uh, of where I was and sort of figuring out what these career paths could look like um, and how to, to, to have a career in health. But hopefully I can give you some helpful frameworks uh, that you can use to think about the industry uh, and sort of tips for exploration. 
So the healthcare industry is massive uh, with many players. In college, I really thought that it was basically like two things that I could do coming right out of um, right out of college. You could either go get a PhD or a master's and be a research scientist, um, or you could go be a doctor and practice medicine. But really, it's more than just this, right? Like it is a massive ecosystem. There are so many opportunities and entry points for careers. You could work in funding of healthcare, being a VC focused on biopharma innovation or digital health tools. You could work at an innovator at a large biopharmaceutical company or a small startup working to, to develop new tools. You could work in marketing, commercial, finance, strategy. None of these require a, a medical degree. Um, you could work in hospital administration. It's not sexy, but you could go work at a health insurer. You could work in government through regulation or program administration. There are so many different entry points to a career in healthcare across the entire ecosystem. And all of these really will have a massive impact on patient outcomes. So next, I'm going to give you a few examples of the uh, types of careers in healthcare you can have coming out of Claremont. So this exercise involves two things that I love. First is bragging about some of my friends. And the second is being creepy on LinkedIn. So you'll see some people I did some stalking on behalf of the group. Um, so Eliana, um, Eliana and Emily took sort of inverse approaches to careers in healthcare. Eliana started out at Deloitte doing healthcare consulting and then ended up at CityBlock, which is a healthcare startup. Similar to me, Eliana really benefited from working in consulting first to open up a wide array of career options. Emily uh, did a rotational program at Amgen and now works in the pharmaceutical practice at McKinsey. So Emily was really grateful for a, ro a structured rotational program as a way to explore many career paths. Um, through my LinkedIn stalking, I found two other paths I want to share with you for two women I do not know but seem lovely. Um, so Sarah um, started in another great rotational program at DaVita Kidney Care before going to work in government for the state of Massachusetts, uh, managing sort of uh, Department of Health programs. She then pivoted to working at a health startup in operations. I think the day he gives a good example of working in philanthropy. So both at the Aga Khan Foundation and at Chapago, which are global health foundations. Um, and she also is a good example of somebody who used graduate school for her a master's in public health at Johns Hopkins as a way to sort of expand the opportunities available to her. Um, so hopefully this quick and creepy run through gives you a small taste of the many different like tactical, practical like careers that you can have um, in healthcare after you graduate from Claremont. So we will now quickly spin through some of what I think are important challenges and opportunities in global and women's health. This is extremely non-exhaustive, um, but will hopefully affirm some of the thinking you've prepared for today um, or to help you think about some of the problems you're addressing in new ways. So there are lots of challenges in global health. Global health is a massive topic. I cannot cover it on one slide, but a, a few things for you to think through. Um, so obviously, uh, a big focus in global health today is preparing to address the threat of future pandemics and um, using a global health system that has very recently demonstrated its inability to respond to pandemics in a swift and equitable way. Additionally, another challenge is the rising burden of non-communicable diseases. Um, so, you know, very much in contrast to infectious disease, pandemics. Um, so non-communicable diseases like cancer and diabetes are really growing in low and middle income countries. So whereas global health work has historically focused on infectious disease, uh, we must now learn how to address these different types of diseases in low resource settings. So how do you do cancer care in an extremely low resource setting when uh, incidence and prevalence of cancers are rising in LMIC? And then finally, climate change continues to have an effect on health you know, both from the standpoint of emissions cause and exacerbate disease, but also it's impossible to be healthy on a dying planet. So this is a sort of existential threat to, to global health. Um, you know, this is so depressing. The left-hand sides of these slides are very depressing. 
But uh, there are lots of exciting promises of opportunities to address fees and other problems. Um, I think innovative global partnerships across public, private, and social sectors are a really exciting way um, to scale, to quickly scale solutions. Um, additionally, new technologies, I mean, AI is very sexy right now, but just like generally, like general new technologies are an exciting way to um, improve both services and research to develop new tools. Um, and then finally, I think workforce focused interventions. Um, are growing in sort of importance and focus for funders, uh, which is a great way to think about uh, enabling the next generation of healthcare workers to improve global health sort of across this whole system that we're, we're discussing. Um, so women's health is my my passion area. I could talk about this forever, but I'll, I'll only speak for a few minutes. Um, so women's health has challenges, so many challenges in the U.S. and around the world. Um, sort of the, the the case in point, right, is this unacceptably high and growing maternal mortality rate, both in the U.S. and around the world. You know, we're going in the absolute wrong direction here. Um, this is the you know, this is caused by many things, one of which is an absolutely abysmal lack of research and investment in women's health and a, just a huge lack of data on how women's bodies work. Finally, um, the current care and payment models um, in the U.S. and around the world are designed to the male default, which leads to suboptimal outcomes for women. All of this stuff, this sad left-hand side, however, means that there's a ton of opportunity to drive change and impact and so many opportunities to work in this space. Um, so uh, this, like, there's so much room for technology and service innovation to improve the standard of care across all conditions. I think especially, like, I mean, maternity and fertility get a lot of sort of interest. The outcomes are horrible. But even beyond that, right, like women's health is, you know, exists outside of maternity and fertility. So conditions like endometriosis, menopause, even like women's cardiovascular health. There's so much white space to improve service and technologies um, that make up the standard of care. There's also a big opportunity to improve the awareness and education on gaps in women's health, both for individual women to empower themselves to like, you know, take control of their health, but also just for society at large. Um, and finally, I personally am really excited about clearly articulating and proving out the business case for women's health to demonstrate to incumbents in the industry and the healthcare ecosystem on that, you know, slide of boxes we talked about a few minutes ago um, to, to stimulate investment to accelerate progress. So like very rapid um, blowing through of the, uh, the main challenges and opportunities. So if I could leave you with two things as you go in today and to tomorrow and to, to next week, um, there are so many ways to have a career in healthcare uh, beyond practicing medicine. I would encourage all of you to explore these paths through conversations with each other, with the alumni you meet today, with reaching out to us um, after today, through career services and testing hypotheses through internships, um, and just exploring like why, what a career in healthcare could, could mean for you. The second point is though there are lots of challenges, there are also lots of high potential opportunities in global health and, and in women's health as well. I think the ideas that you prepare today are proof of that. 